Right, hello, it's Dave here and I'm with my wife Cathy. Hello. We're doing our last ever Mile of Thrones. Yes. Well, until the last next season. Until the next season. And we're doing it because it's a bank holiday. A stunningly gorgeous yeah, sunny with sunglasses on holiday. because it's after 11 o'clock so not at 6 in the morning yes. <laughs> which is really oh, nice oh it's such a nice lie-in yeah. <laughs> didn't have to get up early I don't have to go to work this is all working out great and no baby for us no still no baby so I think that our baby has you, know, you, you forget that it's a fact that babies can hear everything outside of the womb particularly at this stage so the baby's been hearing the first six episodes and the baby can speak English and the baby understands everything so the mm. baby kind of wants to know I think what happens in the end but wouldn't it want to come Doesn't out and watch it, it for itself no the baby wants to experience <laughs> the <laughs> Game of Thrones the auditory way okay well luckily for <laughs> we had so many viewers who wrote in or listeners asking saying can you wait till after your Game of Thrones review to um to have your baby so your wish has come true yes and we also had a lot of um, name suggestions from people uh, saying that we should name the baby Danny or Drogon. And we're not doing that. <laughs> um, but thank you for your kind suggestions. And what else? Oh yeah, we were even thinking that we'd miss this episode and because we're so um, conscious of our viewers, we were going to line up someone else to do a review, but obviously we didn't need to do that because we're here. Now, i um, just going to move a bit because there's some darkening dogs. There's dogs in our neighbour's garden. <laughs> and... So, very quickly, this is going to be a very long episode. It's approximately 79 minutes, I We're think. We're now down the side of the house yeah. to give you all of it. <laughs> so, it's approximately 79 minutes, which is insane. What's it called? What's the that longest name? ever episode of Game of Thrones, and that's longer than... Is it than, actually? Is that yeah. a fact? And um, it's, right. it's longer than some movies at that, at that duration. And it's, it's the length that most movies should be. Yeah, exactly. And it's called The Dragon and the Wolf, which is a pretty cool title. Oh, yes. amazing. Um, so, I also, haven't gone online. Well, saying, well, so, that means that's Danny and John, right? I guess so. Yeah, or it could House be Bran. Targaryen and House Stark. Or could be Bran. Yeah, you keep forgetting about Bran. Dave foolishly was looking at his phone and saw a bit of a spoiler. Well... I blame no one but you. Yeah, I'll, I'll discuss it afterwards. Yeah. When I saw. Um, and then, so briefly, my expectations for this episode are... I think Cersei's been really absent. Um, so she needs to come back with the bang. Yeah. We need to see a zombie dragon. Well, we're likely going to see the meeting between. I don't think. I don't think you're going to see a zombie dragon in this episode. Really? No. Would you wait eighteen months for another fucking <laughs> for a zombie dragon? Yeah, I really don't. I think that's the last. I, and I also don't think you're going to see the White Walkers in this episode. Okay. I think this is going to. This is Cersei meeting Danny and John in King's Landing. I suspect. Um, and I think basically every character because because now all characters are hitched with one of those sides. Right? Yeah. So basically every character in Game of Thrones is going to be at King's Landing at the same and time. And she's going to laugh at their stupid zombie. Yeah. Gift. She's going to be like, oh, I think Cersei's going to feign um, interest at the beginning, being like, oh, that's so interesting. Oh, you have a zombie. We <laughs> we should talk to team up. Uh, and then she's going to unleash whatever trap she's planning, which is probably going to be awesome. And hopefully, I'm hoping that Game of Thrones is going to finally remember what show it is and kill off maybe... Oh, well, this is what I've written down. I actually had to write down what I wanted to say to this intro because I'm so tired because this baby just, I would say, kicked the crap out of me last night. Um, So I think something bad's going to happen between the Stark sisters. That's my feeling. Yes. And I've made a note that that either Cersei, Jaime, Tyrion, Jon, Sansa, Arya or Daenerys have to die or this show's a joke. Yeah, at one, least of those, one of those. One of those. Okay, so we're going to come back to that list which you've written down. Yeah. And if none of them die in this episode, it's a fail. Then you have failed. Yeah. You have failed Game of Thrones. You have. Okay. Bye. Okay, that's it. Yep. I love how abruptly you want to end these <laughs> I'm things. I'm really tired. Um, all right, let's go watch it. Bye. <laughs> that's it that's all your Game of Thrones for the next year and a half or <laughs> whenever uh, so let's just do we'll do our general thoughts yeah on that and then we'll get into some some details scene by scene uh, so that took us just just for the record that took us about two to two and a half hours to watch because we had a lot of breaks yeah it was went out for snacks yeah <laughs> I needed sugar so I went to the shop for some junk food which is terrible but I was like I'm really tired and 
I, that dragged for me that episode. I, I just, I, I, do you know what? I'm probably not in the right state of mind to be watching it. Oh, you mean that your body's about to just like uh, have a baby at any minute? Yeah. So. so I actually needed to go out and get some sugar, and now we're walking around, but it's like quite sunny, so my energy levels are bad. I apologize. Um, yeah, All I right, well, let's it pick it up. A bit, and like my overall impression was that it was just entirely predictable, and like no, there were no surprise. Su- one I mean, thing surprised me: the Sansa Littlefinger stuff. All the rest oh, of it, the major okay. plot stuff, I entirely predicted it, and and of course it was all, it was great to see it all unfold, and I enjoyed the spectacle of it. But it was but very by the numbers, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was pretty n- much no shock. Exactly as we expected, uh, no big surprises except that. Um, and and by that you mean Littlefinger and Sansa? Yeah, we'll yeah. talk about that later. But the uh, your your list of people dying, not a single person. I know, and I thought, look, am I being pedantic? Am I expecting? Nobody died by potet bar potentially Thorman right at the end, and we don't even know if he did or not. No. So, little, now, little my Game of Thrones. Died. Oh, sorry, Littlefinger died, and like that is interesting because you know he's a major like manipulator. But and I, and I, maybe I'm being reductive saying people should die in Game of Thrones. But really, now at this point, all this all this whole season served to be is just set up for the final season. I mean, when you. Okay, let's just get into detail because I think um, I've di- I've sort of disappointed about how the whole Cersei confrontation went. Yeah. Okay. And normally when we're doing these, we either break down by location or by characters to to make it more digestible. But actually, we're just going to go through it by linear fashion through the episode because everyone met everyone in this episode, so um, there's no point in trying to kind of split it out that way. Um, so we basically start with most of the episode takes place in King's Landing and we start with Jamie and um, Bronn in kind of a fun exchange where they talk about men I enjoyed their, this scene I liked watching cocks. I liked watching the unsullied uh, sort of form, a, form out the front yeah I liked that and First then I liked Grey um, Worm in a while I liked watching the dust tracky like run through them then so the two forces combined like yeah. the, the unsullied are so still they're very intimidating and the dust tracky are so violent and together they're very intimidating yeah and they're getting burning pitch um and then we get to... I enjoyed all the stuff. Bron, Bron was just excellent in this scene. Yeah, he's good. And like Cersei, then we get to her. And I'm just... I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but her wigs really bother me. And it was particularly weird. In this, It was almost like a kind of an orangey yellow. And she looked a bit strange. She looks anyway, like Joffrey. Yeah, she looks weird. And then she says to the mountain, if this all goes to pot, kill the silverhead bitch, then kill my brother, then kill Jon Snow. Yeah. So I quite enjoyed that. Except... Spoiler alert! Nothing went to plot. Yeah, really. it's just, and then we get to. It's so this is kind of the meat bleh. of the episode, where we're in the kind of dragon zoo arena sanctuary place. Dragon zoo. And initially, I guess it was a dragon zoo, wasn't this it? Is literally do you think they? Do you think they had it open for like as an attraction? You could come and see the dragons. I don't know. Do not pet the dragons. I, could, I didn't get the. I didn't under, really understand what it was. I didn't know if it's where they fought, where they were held captive, where people came to see them, or a bit of all three. I feel like the book readers w- would have been uh, shitting themselves over this, but, but but it looked cool. It feels like an extra detail, but they kind of explained it in a line of exposition on the way in, so the dragons uh, don't see. Uh, divisions of who owns what or whatever so they were just basically going around eating whatever they wanted killing whoever they wanted because they're just creatures and so they had to chain them up essentially and because because there was a died. million people in King's Landing and they were just and then these are all the people dangerous. that we see there and, and this is just when I kind of lost the plot a bit we've got Tyrion, John, Davos, Pod Brienne, the Hound Jorah, Theon Varys Euron <laughs> yeah you and then the mountain. they're kind of all there Cersei. and then no Cersei then before this is before Cersei arrives we kind of have Pod and Tyrion like catching up with the Hound and Brienne catching up Tyrion and Bronn chatting and I'm like do you know what I'm sick of this is like three reunions in the space of 30 seconds like at this point everyone just knows everyone yeah but they have to acknowledge that and um, and uh, this was exactly like um, when they were beyond the wall in the last episode and we got all these little one on ones I loved all that stuff I like all that I, but you're it missing just felt like, but it just felt like okay we've done all this this season and now no, we're just but, doing it again but it's, it's fun and it's throwaway and the episode's 79 minutes long and it lasted two minutes so it's fine okay. but also you don't have the, the history with these characters because you didn't watch seasons two to five or whatever so you don't like you didn't remember you didn't know that Pod was friends with Tyrion Bronn or any of that no right? so I guess so I was just it, bored by them it doesn't mean anything to you yeah whereas and this is what I was kind of saying to you before about 
you said this at the beginning of the podcast that you don't feel like you missed anything by skipping all those seasons of Game of Thrones because you were able to just fill in on the plot via Wikipedia and just hearing about it. But you did miss out on the character interactions and spending time with these characters. But so I'm I think still glad like I skipped three, se- three scenes just to make up two minutes in the finale like of, of a, someone saying hello <laughs> no, to somebody. No, you can't justify <laughs> this. That's not how you watch okay, TV. Okay, we've so much to get through. Um, I did enjoy that... Um, the Hound and Tyrion have, have a brief exchange and um, Tyrion says there's always some clicking cunt to help the Lannisters just as the mountain arrives Yeah. with Cersei, Euron, Greyjoy and her Hand of the King and then the Hand of the Mountain finally had their face off which everyone had been really excited about and it was really dull but no fighting nobody fought anyone in this episode and also it was interesting that Cersei has four people and Daenerys had like a hundred people yeah, everyone is gangs. everyone is Team Danny. At yeah, this stage. who's who's Cersei got? And um, by the end of this episode, she's got she's one got less. Nobody. And then it, the Hound says to his brother, "You're even fucking uglier than I am." Now. I did. The Hound had some great lines, yeah. as always. The brother's just like says nothing because he's Frankenstein's monster. And then we're so like, then "Where's Danny?" Then they Awkward. all take a seat. Everyone's kind of waiting for Danny, and she obviously has to make a big entrance. She's fashionably late. We knew she up, was going to show up in the dragon. Up her dragon. Stupid though, she should have showed Stupid. up on one dragon. Yeah, exactly, show up with one. Don't show up with two because you show up with two, it implies that you're missed down at third. Yeah, which Cersei makes no sense. Figured out. But I love when she got off the dragon. Then just like it was no big deal, just sits down, and then Cersei's like, "You're late." But Cersei goes, we've been waiting for ages. <laughs> and they'd only just sat down, like 10 seconds. And then you're on Greyjoy, just but suddenly how, start showboating. How convenient is the timing of all that? Yes, um, it's all ludicrous. Like, I mean, like, uh, whatever. Let's not show. even skip to... Um, yeah, I on. really enjoyed you on showboating. He <laughs> I loved, the on and then immediately says to Tyrion, you're really small. And Tyrion's like, I know that <laughs> we would have killed you if you grew up in my tribe. I love that he interrupted Tyrion's intro just to start shit-talking. I know, him. and then Jamie's like, sit down. And Cersei's like, sit the fuck down. Yeah. So that was the end of him. Then we have... John speaking he hadn't spoken yet um, and he tells Cersei all about the big bad world out there um, and then the zomb- the hound brings the zombie in which was quite fun and for a second when he opened the box we were like wait is the zombie even there um, can I can I say something though yeah so Danny and uh, Tyrion whatever John they've all been invited to King's Landing Cersei is like fine but they're all her they're all her enemies and they're all in one place they're all um at risk here of anything happening and she allows them to bring in a box with an unknown <laughs> yeah. horrible creature inside in it right in front of her um, like how bad is the security you wouldn't be able to get that through at an airport yeah that's a really the good giant, point giant giant box with a zombie inside in it and then they and then they all just sit there watching while the hound empties the box and it basically just runs up to her and like gets within an inch of her like luckily they had measured the train the chain to the exact measurements of the distance from the box to her throne or it would just would have eaten her and the whole thing would have been pointless well I um, think Cersei yeah I mean it also the mountain the question, didn't react to that it begs the question like why is Cersei doing any of this that I still don't quite understand I did enjoy okay here's what I liked about this uh, she did I thought um, what's her name who plays Cersei was very good in this scene she Lena was Hedley, yeah, she's Lena Headley she was visibly shaken well like, the hound let her, her go shoulders, the zombie go right up to her face with the chain like yeah. That was terrifying. But she was like, her shoulders were hunched. And um, I thought Whereas Jamie she was, was really good when the dragon came in, she acted completely like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Jamie she could have been very... less impressed by the dragon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jamie was very shaken. Um, he asked, you know, he sort of whispered, like, how many are there? Like, you could see that it, the, the demonstration that they had planned of showing just one White Walker was actually very Yeah, effective. it was worth it and, and it did, it did it make did me job. respect and I like the way John said this is the fate of everyone in the world only one war matters the Great War um, and Euron's like I'm out of here um, <laughs> I loved this I don't know but I was like, his first line he goes over sort of strokes the hair of the zombie creepily and then he said can they swim? And then at the second he said that, we were just like, oh, he's, he's got it. He's going home. He's out of there. <laughs> and then like, my favorite thing is... Why not? Is he right, lives on an island. Right before he says we're out of here, um, we had an interesting conversation where D- um, Dave said, or right after he said, um, I'm out of here, Dave said, oh, he's being really cowardly like Theon. I'm like, no, he's being smart. Yeah. He's being very smart. Like, why the fuck would you stay and fight zombies if you could go and live on an island and have them never attack you? But it's cowardly. I think it's pragmatic I don't think it's cowardly at all and I love that well, we right know where you'd be when the right when the before White Walkers he leaves he, tries, he chats up Daenerys he's like look me up what everyone says yeah, yeah I love that <laughs> go back to your island that wait was till really everyone's enjoyable. dead um, 
And then um, Cersei surprises us all by saying the crown accepts your truth. Um, and what I really enjoyed is she just says basically the king of the north isn't to take sides. I know Ned Stark's son will be true to his word. And I first of all, I enjoyed this. Right about that. She acknowledges him as the king of the north, which a lot of people haven't done actually, including Daenerys wasn't acknowledging it. And then... I just thought it was a really good throwback to even she knows how honourable Ned Stark was and she yeah. like fully trusts the fact that his son would be honourable and I thought that was really interesting coming from her. I wouldn't have thought that she would put that level of consideration into people like that. And then John ruins everything. No, hang on. Okay, so he he, he was in an impossible position, right? He wasn't! He, I know, There's but... no sense of like any sort of diplomacy or... or like he, John's whole life's mission is to stop the White Walkers, right? Cersei's about to help him and he says, oh no, I'm true to my word. I've already bent my knee to Daenerys because I love her. And He wasn't going to lie. And that's like, but that's the whole, that's the whole foundation of his character and the Stark's character. And yes, uh, it, it, as he mentions afterwards when Tyrion and even Danny like chewed him out over his decision. He just drones on and on about false promises. He said like, yeah, that's, I know that's what, got my father killed um but that you know he can't he said oh he had a big speech about how just one lie compounds another lie and that's not the world they're building and i i admire that i, I like yeah but the whole point is i like rhetoric and principle yeah but he's made the bigger point already that the war between humans doesn't matter right now the war is between the humans and the white walkers and then he's directly undermining his own argument by carrying on about how great daenerys is when he's supposed to be working for the wider mission of going against the White Walkers. So he's actually not even being true to himself properly. He's just being an idiot. Yeah, but then what sort of a leader is he going to be on the other side of it? A leader he... who stopped the White Walkers marching on Winterfell. I know, but what would have happened then is that he's he would have had to be out of the war between Danny and Cersei. But he wouldn't have had to be. He could join at a later play. A no, later no, no, point. but that's his whole thing. That's not his character and he wouldn't be able to Yeah, but at some point, inevitably, that. Cersei would have tried to uh, march on Winterfell and then he could have justifiably um, defended his his castle against her. No, 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 but it's not about it's not about that. Anyway, look. Look, it's... anyway. And I just like the way it basically says Tyrion says we're fucked and Cersei will definitely murder you if you try and talk to her. And Brienne tries to say to Jamie, like, this is crazy, stop, like and fuck loyalty, and he's just like walks off with his sister. And then the next scene is Jamie and Tyrion kind of both referring to themselves as idiots, and Jamie says we should go say goodbye, one idiot to another. Which is kind of a nice scene. Yeah, I like um, that. And then we have this great confrontation between Tyrion and Cersei. I thought it was really, really good. And the mountain. And the, the mountain face. hanging. hanging <laughs> he was just like chilling out right back. next to them. Uh, Tyrion did that sort of uh, action hero, Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon equivalent, where you put your you put your forehead up against the gun and you say, "Do it, just do it, okay?" And, like, I'm crazy. Twice I don't in care. this episode, her brother, a brother, said to her, "Go on, kill me." Go on, and kill she me, seriously yeah. considered it. And she was close to doing it both times. And she says, um, "I'm not surprised you like her. She's a foreign whore." Um, they had a good lot of good uh, snappy back and forth. I kind of miss these two. I enjoyed being the scene. in the same city. Yeah. Like, let's not forget they were there for three seasons. I together. really enjoyed the scene, but I was expecting him to die at the end of it. And I know I'm obsessed with someone dying, but I just thought, lame. Why she? Why would she let Tyrion go? She but how hates come, Tyrion. Okay, so so this this scene ends. She he figures out that she's pregnant, um, and then next time we see each other, she's she's basically agreed to help them. Um, but we kind of miss how he convinced her to do that was it just just that you're well I don't think he convinced her I think she's just conniving she wanted to make it look like the reason that she has given in is because something happened between her and Tyrion in reality she's not given in at all so she's using Tyrion but I did enjoy when um, he said you know like he pours himself a drink and then pours one for her which is quite fun and he says I loved your children you know it in your heart if there's anything left of it and he also says about Daenerys um, she would have burned King's Landing if I hadn't told her not to and Cersei's like, well, then she's no better than me. And he says, well, actually, no, because she keeps herself in check and she's chosen an advisor who she'll actually listen to and who controls her impulses. And Cersei's like, whatever. It was a bit silly, though. Um, she also says that you're on, maybe you're on Greyjoy was right. And that's when I thought, actually, I think she's faking it because she would never say someone's right to run off and retreat to an island. Mm. And then she's like rubbing her stomach. I don't know, it was all a bit... It's a bit of a weird end to a scene for him just to say you're pregnant and then for the scene to cut because we know she's pregnant so that wasn't actually particularly interesting. Um, And then we've got John and Daenerys and she's saying I respect what you did but I don't like it. And they talk about the demise of dragons 
And then there's some heavy sewing posting here. They, yeah, they go. They basically go into a little uh, alcove together. And, and she says, "I'm shadowy. infertile," and, and he's really like, close. "Maybe you're not infertile. <laughs> Why don't we test that out later?" <laughs> Who knows, eh? Um, and then he says, "It appears Tyrion's assessment is correct. We're fucked," which I find really weird because normally John's very humorless, and this was my first probably and only laugh of the episode. Yeah. Um. So that was interesting to see John. And then Cersei comes, struts back in again. So this is all still in the dragon arena. And she's wearing the most amazing dress I've probably ever seen. I thought um, this was She all... looked amazing. She, yeah, it's cool. And she says, we'll face the darkness together. And we're going, wow. At this point, I kind of bought her. Mm. I, I wasn't fully doubting I her at this point. I didn't. She always has a backup plan. But I, I, I'll admit, I like I enjoyed all these interactions. I thought the dialogue was great. I love that it was sort of a, an awkward dinner party with all of them hanging out together. But the whole thing just didn't amount to anything. And no. It's and it's like, what was Cersei's great plan? Just to she just lied and isn't going to help them. That's it. Yeah. Why does, that, does like, she meet them? Why is she doing this? this I mean, she's a same... point later on when she says they don't need me if they're. She's like, if they're going to defeat the White Walkers, they can do it without me. They've got dragons and fire defeats them. Like, she's right. They they don't need her. But, like, it's it's this is the same woman who, in Series 6, conspired to get all her enemies in the same place uh, at the same time and then exploded them all with, with green yeah, fire. Yeah, I was expecting her to do something like she that. She should have done something badass and cool and there should have been a big fight... Um, and it's, that should have been it. You yeah, should do like anything. Very underwhelming. And yeah. Not very Cersei, I thought. And so that's kind of the end of all these guys being together. And then we first, for the first time, cut to Winterfell, which I was. We were wondering was Winterfell going to show up at all? Actually, um, a really. Well, visually... I had to. No, no. We said we. You have. You have to resolve the sisters. Yeah, the plot. sisters. You can't hang that. Leave that hanging for ease. And then it was now. such a visually dark scene, and it's such a sunny day. Actually, we struggled to see this. <laughs> yeah, it was um, hard to see. But yeah, Dave called this scene. Dave said she's baiting Littlefinger. I wasn't sure. Um, well, I, I must say, shout out to a uh, listener and friend of the show, Lee Gant, who who did call this episodes ago. Yeah. Said that. Uh, um, Sansa is playing Littlefinger. It's hard to know what Sansa because she's so unreal. I wasn't sure. I, I actually bought no. I bought this. I bought that she was that stupid. Yeah, and but he's like, um, I, I was, I was always imagine the worst it. of somebody. Um, and then I did. No, think... he basically said, "Let's play a little game, <laughs> yeah. like a uh, like jigsaw." And then she said, um, "You know, at, at the same time as well, when she was imagining the worst of Arya, I thought, well, Arya has done herself no favors, so I could see why Sansa would believe this stuff." Yeah. Um, so then that was kind of anyway, let's a come little back to scene and then we got back to um, the war the war strategy where we're, it's kind of um, Daenerys and her advisors and they're questioning should she fly or should she sail and she's like <laughs> so boring we like, sail how together are we travel? <laughs> but she's like we sail together and her and John kind of moon at each other and then yeah. Jorah looks really sad did you catch that no I missed yeah, that yeah they show Jorah for a second oh he knows what's going um, on and then I just thought like, like, oh I'll travel with you and again then this is where um like again I, I missed out on Cora Theon Reek plot yeah. I don't care about Theon I think he's so boring at this point when he shows up I think it's like just this crap subplot that I've no interest in I mean Theon has very little left to do he's, he's got very so little pointless. I guess he's got to redeem himself a little bit I kind of like he's redeemed himself he saved Lance at Sansa last yeah, season like exactly. whatever or he saved Arya oh Sansa sorry yeah um, I know I just said that I know sorry I corrected you and then corrected myself okay and then but I mean it's a nice moment John forgives him Theon's like I wish I was like you I yeah. think I think that do we really need in the grand scheme of things do we really need another Theon redemption and him going to save his sister. I kind of like that there's a symmetry to it because she tried to save him. She was the only one who tried but to save cares? him. who cares? They're like C-list characters. Yeah. And like at this point, we're talking about the final of this series with this much going on. Now, there's way more important stuff guess, to be showing us than I this. I guess they kinda, we kind of want to see him defeat Euron. But really, I mean, you're, you're right. There's not... And John's like, Ned is part of you. Of and then Theon goes to the beach and tries to rouse the troops. And we're like, why would anyone listen to Theon? Like the troops just want to get out of there. They they run spits on him. It, they start having this stupid fight, and it was quite funny when he was kicking Theon in the groin, and Theon had no reaction whatsoever. Yes, it's one of the only times where not having any balls is actually yeah. an advantage. <laughs> and then Theon like kills him with a rock, and then everyone suddenly is following Theon. And I was thinking, yeah. no, they're not a pack of wolves. Like you he don't just take down them. the leader, and then everyone follows you like really subservient. They would still be like, fuck off, Theon. 
Yeah, you're right. Didn't quite. It ring didn't make through. any sense. And then he's like, "For Yara." But maybe there's sort of a I don't know. Maybe there's an Iron Island or <laughs> sort of code. No, if well, you just, murder someone, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> and you and automatically take their he place. He didn't even do a good job of it. And then he baptizes his new self with like sea water. I thought it was so overtly <laughs> symbolic. Is that what he was doing? He was like knelt, kneeled down in the sea, and he comes from like the, an ocean of the Iron Island or whatever, and starts like putting water on his face. And I just thought, oh my god, is this actually what they're doing with this scene? I thought it was pathetic. He proved he has the biggest balls by having no balls. <laughs> and then we cut back to Santa and it's this beautifully snowy scene of her kind of up in a wall, which was evocative of the wall her and... Or might have been the same wall that her and Theon had jumped off in the last season, was it? Don't know. It seemed to cut to what looked like last season. It looked really snowy and beautiful. And then she's like, summon my sister to the Great Hall. And I fully believe that she was going to get Arya killed at this point. No, I kind of had my suspicions at this stage. And this was the only fun of the episode. This was the only intrigue. Yeah. And then she's sitting with Bran next to her, and we were like, "Oh my god, we've completely forgotten <laughs> yeah. about Bran." <laughs> we both went, "Oh Bran, <laughs> I forgot he was there or existed." Um, uh, this all-powerful, all-seeing three-eyed raven just hanging out. Just chilling. Um, and then she says, "Honor demands I just dis- um, defend Winterfell from those who want to betray us." And then she goes. Littlefinger, you or whatever his Lord name is. Lord Baelish. She I'm goes, genuinely shocked. I gasped. No, I can't believe you gasped. That's the, I swear to God, this is the lamest moment. It wasn't. It was of fun. Game of Thrones. Ever. It was like a, a classic murder she wrote moment. It was, it was like, exactly Jacuse. a murder she wrote moment. <laughs> it was. It was pathetic. I it actually wasn't. laughed out loud. It this was, was the point where I was like, I'm so over this episode. I'm going to go and have a nap, and then this happened, and it perked me right up. So. No, it had the opposite effect on me. I was like. <laughs> This is so embarrassingly stupid. No. No, it, it was, was really fun. She confronted him with everything. But it was the lamest confrontation and then ever. It was the three and she kids. didn't pull it off. The way she the way <laughs> the way it's just like psych. Gotcha. You thought I was talking about my sister. And then Bran's like, I've seen everything because I'm the world's <laughs> biggest creep. But I really like the way the three star kids uh, banded together finally. And then she I says, mean, There's a game I like to play. Oh, Come on, that lame, was fun. Lame. That was fun. She turned it on him. And she said, I'm a slow learner, it's true, I mean, but I learn, which I really liked. I mean, I liked, yeah, I kind of, the scene won me over towards the end, and I liked how, I liked that we finally got to see Littlefinger on the on the opposite foot and trying. And he's begging, like he's on his knees, begging, yeah. groveling. And I think this is a very appropriate end for a very sinister and evil character, and you don't often get endings like this. He for got evil his come up and like, he fucked Oh, absolutely. Up. He started it all, he's killed, or basically behind the death of their mother and father, their brother. Um, he's like I loved your mother I loved you and she says and thank yet, you and you betrayed her thank you for so many lessons you've and taught yet. me a lot that was cool yeah and then Arya's like slits his throat and he's a really slow painful death while everyone just watches um, yeah look in the end I think fitting end for Littlefinger well done I thought the scene the, just the whole thing was very and I thought Aidan Gillen I know we slag his accent but he was really good in this episode yeah it was good yeah. but like I'm so, okay. can we unpick this a little bit like yeah. so so Arya and Sansa were were conspiring the whole time against Littlefinger so why were they in the previous episode no I don't think they were conspiring so I didn't at think what Arya, stage do you think they they flipped I didn't think Arya knew that this was going to happen she absolutely knew. Really? Oh, 100%. Are you kidding me? I thought Sansa was keeping it all um, very tight-lipped. No. Only Bran knew. Because uh, Arya... No, I'm sorry. As soon as she says, Lord Bailey, <laughs> then Arya gives this little sort of smile and look, turns toward him as well, like, gotcha. Oh, I don't know. Absolutely, she was in on it. Which means... Well, t- we don't well, know how much time Correct me if I'm passed, wrong, somebody. But we don't know how much time has passed since the last episode. But I think I think the whole thing, they were planning a fake-out from the start. No, there was no way. There was a genuinely terrifying scene between them in the last episode. Okay, well... I that, think that's... It's, it's between the episodes, or it was between the scene with her and Littlefinger, and then the scene with her killing him. Her and Arya conferred then. Anyway, whenever it happened, it wasn't worth it. It was lame. It was cheese ball. They just did it for a shock moment to, to no, fool the viewers. You're, being, you're saying that like categorically it was lame and it wasn't worth it. Well, someone is telling you that that was their most enjoyed bit of the episode. No, fine. It's a subjective thing. I'm just telling you what I thought. Okay. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I'm glad <laughs> well, if anyone else who enjoyed it, but did not land for me, I actually am embarrassed. You're lucky involved. this scene happened because I was fit to turn it off. Um, and then we go back to Jamie and Cersei in that awesome map room. Um, oh yeah! So cool. Oh, I love that map. Yeah, room. that map room is really cool. 
<laughs> and then she's so horrible. She says, I always knew you were the stupidest Lannister. Yeah. You're talking to your lover twin. You know, is that how you would speak to him? <laughs> and she's saying, I intend to stay amongst the living. I want to let the monsters kill each other. She has a very good point. She says, they have dragons. What I can we add? You, you keep siding with Cersei and Euron in this. No, I'm not siding with them. But she's right. If they're, if the Dothraki... Um, the unsullied and the dragons can't defeat them what is the point in us being there yeah but then then Jamie's right because whoever wins we lose they're going to come down south and he kill says them. yeah both sides will march so they may as well ball. it's actually Jamie's right because she's better off um, in the original plan she had which was I will go and help you and remember that and I'm not asking for anything and they probably would have gone easier on her afterwards right yeah, but she doesn't care. Like, Cersei doesn't want Daenerys going easy on her. Cersei wants to be queen or be dead. Like, she, she has no interest in alliances or being yes. not being the queen. Like, that that would be such a strange thing for her to Again, want. Again, I just found this all so disappointing that her big plan was just to do nothing. I know. And then she's, like, putting Jaime down again. You never listen to father. All you want to do is hunt and fight. And uh, then she admits that her and Euron had plotted separately and he's gone to es- Esos? He's gone to Esos to get the Golden Company, which is a big army of mercenaries, which are going to come and defend King's Landing. And then he says, you know, I was like, who does he think he is? Jon Snow. He's like, I gave my word. I'm going to ride up north. Well, Jamie kind of, yeah, Jamie's a very conflicting sort of character throughout the whole of Game of Thrones. He does sort of veer towards dark and light often, but he is essentially a knight and he is kind of noble in his own way. Yeah, but even he's completely he's... beholden to her. I didn't... I, I mean, I think what, what smarted him so much in this scene, I think it was more personal. I think it was that he realised her and Euron had conspired without telling him. Yes. And I think that's why he ultimately was like, fuck you. But also, I, think I mean... I don't think it was the honour thing. They've been sort of rocky for the past while, these two. So I, I mean, they've been, been very intimate this season. This. Yeah. Um, and then this is the, so this is the second time she says I told you no one walks away from me so it's the second time in the episode where we think she's in a situation where she's going to kill her brother she's both times I thought she should have done yeah. it and she didn't and I just don't buy it no, one of them why, should have been killed but why not they're still her they're still her brothers she can't quite do it they're still because if you think about it all she's harping on about is family and that's all that mattered to her. Yeah, but she hates Tyrion. But he's still her uh, brother. Something stopped her. But she's anyway. tried to get him killed before multiple times. I don't know. I just, again, I love Jamie, and I just, I just thought the scene was really disappointing. And then he just rides off on a horse on his own, and I'm like, who do you think you're going to help? It's just you and a horse. Yeah, but he's finally just had enough, and I'm glad. I, I, I want Jamie to be team, 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 not Cersei. Team virtue. Um, and then so, so basically, Cersei has nobody now. Yeah, Cersei has nobody. Apparently, Cersei Euron's has coming back. The mountain, and she has Euron, and she has uh, Doctor Frankenstein. But it's almost like the show has made her insignificant because the show's message is the bigger story is the White Walkers, and at this point, Cersei has nobody, and who gives a fuck because she's a nobody now. Yeah. Did you feel that? Like the rest of them, regardless of what Cersei's doing, the rest of them are going to be marching north. So it it almost makes what she's doing pointless. Mm. Um, and then we cut back. Do you feel like th- with this show? Like the best thing about this show was the political intrigue and the bat stabbing. It was never the White Walkers. The yeah. White Walkers were were this sort of looming threat which uh, sort of pervaded the whole thing. The White Walkers but are like a disaster, like in a movie when an earthquake happens. Yeah. The earthquake's not interesting. They're not in the, no. as villains. They're quite scary and intimidating, and they're cool when you get battle scenes with them. But they're not like interesting. They're not unpredictable. No. They're not human. Cersei is an interesting villain. Exactly. Littlefinger, for all his faults, was very interesting. Yeah, very interesting. So he's gone. She's been kind of essentially immobilized. So if the last so. season is just just John and Danny united against the the White Walkers, then that's not particularly interesting because no. the intrigue is gone. I do. I'm. I'm. I have to say, I've got concerns about the last season after this. But anyway, um, then we cut to Bran. Um, He's just sitting in a room, so staring Sam at the fire. Up, we should say. Sam, and Sam's Sam like, hey, oh, you remember me? And Bran says, I remember everything. He's like, what have you been up to? Oh, I'm the three-eyed raven now. Okay. And then I'm like, Sam, you had one job, which was to be a maester. <laughs> like, fuck off back to where maesters live. Like, he's no, but he so had to crap. He had to deliver this uh, one piece of information. Yeah. The, uh, and then, you know, Bran's all, John needs to know the truth. His last name is Sand. He's not a bastard. Oh, no, he's no, a no. bastard, and he, then sorry, sand means you are a bastard. Yeah, he's saying he's a bastard, and then Sam. So going, Bran, no, for once, doesn't know something. He's not a bastard. Um, but again, why didn't Bran tell John this in advance? Look, you're related to the Targaryens. 
because he wanted to creepily narrate John's sex scene. That's why he wanted <laughs> yeah, to yeah. wait. <laughs> Basically, do you think Bran is also watching the sex scene? Oh, Bran's loving it. Like <laughs> he definitely because he is. says, "I can see the He's past like, and I can see the present." Yeah, you can see everything that's going on. Um, but also, do you know who else is watching? Tyrion standing outside the door like a creep. I know. Uh, and Bran, um, Bran goes quickly watches the wedding of John's parents and then watches. I like that. I like that he has access to all of history. And Sam's, <laughs> Sam's like basically, oh no, that yeah, they were married. And it, and oh, Bran's like, oh, I might go have a look. I might go have um, a look. And then he watches... It's um, like Wikipedia, but like live. It's like VR Wikipedia. That's what the three eyes. But Bran being a complete creep. And then it, he briefly sees um, the sister whisper to Ned Stark, his name is Aegon Targaryen. Yes. Yeah, we which, saw that last season. Like, none of this is news to us. No, we didn't get his name. Yeah, but we? we... No, but we knew no. what she was saying. And like fine, Aegon Targaryen's a really famous. Um, but everybody, conqueror. okay, we had a quick scan online before we we came outside uh, to this beautiful weather, and um, everyone was saying like, "Oh my God, what a big reveal twist uh, at the end of Game of Thrones." There's no twist. This is we had all this the information. The twist is that he's legitimate and the actual heir. To Sorry, the yeah, but but we didn't. We had that information two episodes ago. Yeah, but you're Tilly forgetting that Sam. we we watch Game of Thrones with like with a very analytical mind and we read. Um, we read what people are saying but we listen to people talking about it some people just watch this show and actually don't can't remember everything because it's outrageously ludicrous how much information is thrown at you okay um, so I don't think 100% of viewers knew this now we do need to discuss the sex scene I've been waiting all season for <laughs> John just shows up not, really romantically at her bedroom. I'm not into this. I don't know why you're so into it. Um, well, no. The funny thing is I wasn't happy with this. Um, oh, was it disappointing I've been, for you? I've been you? shipping them so much. <laughs> and then shipping. he shows up at the door and like he's almost like too awkward. Like They've no chemistry. And then I heard something during the week which kind of turned me off them as well, which was... Um, so you know the way, obviously, she says aunt. Mm-hmm. So however normally... Whatever percentage an aunt and nephew are normally related... These two are related way more than that because the Targaryens are so inbred. Oh, of course. So these yeah. two are like super related, right? So I, I do know that. And um, that's what drove um, the, the Mad King mad was all the incest. Yeah, and I think. <laughs> so they're. I think these two are going to have a baby, mad. <laughs> basically. And um, Tyrion is an absolute creep. He's nearly as creep as Bran because he's watching from the corner. And then it was just an awkward sex scene. I don't know what you thought about it. It was. It was brief, first of all. Game of Thrones, we say it's lost its teeth around violence. Certainly lost its teeth around sex and nudity as well. There's been none this season. Um, not that I wanted a really salacious scene, but it was just all a bit... Well, I mean, any whatever. any sex scene is going to be undermined by a creepy character narrating <laughs> over it, explaining that the two characters are related. Yeah, maybe that's why. I, just, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't into it. I'd have rather them it be a different setting and imagine, like okay. some wine or something. Imagine Jack and Rose in the car in Titanic and then Morgan Freeman's voice comes over and says... Little did Jack know that Rose was actually his second cousin. No, his aunt. More related than most aunts. Um, so yeah, they're, I mean, she's definitely. I don't know why pregnant. Morgan Freeman. But yeah, why like, is Morgan Freeman? As soon as Wouldn't you, it be like as Billy as Zane? As, or as soon as you think narration, I jumped to Morgan Freeman. Yeah, but so first of all, I'm glad I was right because if anyone goes back and listens to the start of this season, I yeah. predicted this and you told me I was wrong. Okay. Um, and then secondly, you were bang on the money. <laughs> Secondly, it's so bloody hot. I'm going to need to go in soon. Yeah, okay. So we cut to Sansa and Arya. And they're <laughs> just bonding. walking around the field. And Arya says, I never could have survived like what you survived. And then Sansa says, you're the strongest person I know. And I like nearly cried at this. Because finally they're empathising and understanding and communicating with each other. And it made me less annoyed about the scenes with them last week. Because I felt like, okay, maybe they needed to have those scenes to justify... Um, this and somebody sent us a link on Twitter and I forget who sent it but um, it, it was a link to this woman talking about how Sansa is like we know she's a victim of sexual abuse and Arya was almost making her like blame victim blaming her last time and and that actually was a really awful scene to witness and I hadn't thought of it in that way but it was really horrible what Arya was almost victim blaming Sansa and I really like that she said this time I wouldn't have survived what you survived and then they both quote kind of their father L- Lone Wolf dies but a pack survives and they say I miss him and, they, oh, and I, I miss him nice. too and that was and like was the scene yeah. it looked beautiful though. it looked stunning right. and so that's the scene I've been waiting for with them and I love that they achieved it together and even I know it's really dark the way Arya is like a murderer and stuff but I really enjoyed in the last scene the way Sansa committed Littlefinger to death and then Arya like did it that's a really powerful thing that two women did 
I wouldn't say that happens very often in Westeros. It would always be a knight or a male knight or something. Yeah. Do you think Arya is going to take a face? Nothing bonds two sisters together like uh, murdering. <laughs> but I was thinking Arya might take his face. Yeah. And then go back because she wants to go back and kill Cersei, right? That was her initial goal of the season. Oh, uh, yeah, that'd be good. So she could show up as Littlefinger to Cersei because Cersei has no one. So Cersei would probably let Littlefinger in the door. She'd be like, oh, Littlefinger. She'd be like, I'm <laughs> so bored. I'm What's just up? hanging out with this mountain guy who like, can't even speak. <laughs> she doesn't ever love her anymore. She doesn't have anyone, does she? Euron's She's got off. Euron and Dr. Frankenstein. Euron, who's a Also, complete... I forgot to say, I loved how I forget the, her, the hand of the king, hand of the queen's name, but the Dr. Frankenstein dude. When he picks up the White Walker's arm and he's like, oh, just look at this. Yeah, he's like, yes. <laughs> he loved that. He loved it. <laughs> um, and then we finally cut to the last scene, which was, um, I don't know why they needed to show us that Bran was seeing it. That was pointless. They could have just Bran sees the scene. everything and does nothing. Yeah, so basically Dan, Bran's pointless. And it's the army of the dead marching. Um, and then from Eastwatch perspective from the wall with Thorman and them, I thought, if these guys are all marching. They know fire damages them. Why aren't they throwing burning pitch on them? Which was raised as a possibility at like the start of this episode. They're just watching them. Uh, I don't know. They, oh, they don't have that up there, I guess. I don't know. And then one one shows up. Anyway, that's not one one. It was one one. It's not one one. And a load of those zombie whites that we talked about last week. Um, and then the zombie dragon shows up. But even that was just like, yeah, we knew he was going to show up. Like, yeah, yeah, it was quite cool seeing the blue ice I didn't lightning. Think, fire I thought it looked really it fake. I thought it looked like a video game. Yeah. Well, what did you think? Did, what do you think of the special effects? I thought it was quite cool. I thought it was pretty cool seeing that. Um, but then they just destroyed the wall and kept going. So I don't know. It was it was a bit. Is Tormund dead? I yeah. I, Probably not because they don't kill anyone anymore. But if Tormund died, it's a bit silly of them to have just kind of killed him off in that way because we deserved death in this episode. All we yeah. got, we did get Littlefinger, which was satisfying. But um. I don't know if you'd kill such a good character like that. I mean, at least, at least, look, the White Walkers are finally south of the wall now. But I thought it was pretty uninteresting the way it happened in the end. Cause we knew they remember, were going to get south of the wall. We, we've known that for ages. It's not interesting. Do you remember there were all these theories of, uh, um, you know, Bran breaking the magical barriers and all that? I was like, all that is a lot more interesting than just, oh, they just blew it up. Yeah, they just blew it up with their zombie dragon. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I must know. say, I think this episode was disappointing. There's, I, I mean, I enjoy, I enjoyed a lot of it. It was, it was good to watch. It's obviously by, still one of the best shows on TV. That's what we need to say. By any, we're not being by any other show standards. No, you couldn't say this was bad. No, and nor was this season bad. But really, but they've teed like this is this, the final episode of the penultimate season of the biggest, most talked about show in the world that has unlimited budget, has everything going for it, and to to give us an episode that's been entirely predicted. There were no surprises no. here. I think the show has become less interesting. I think this whole well, this is probably why George O. R. R. Martin stopped writing the books. I think he wrote himself into a hole, and like I really admire these showrunners who both wrote this episode as well. I really admire them. Like it's a very difficult task that George O. R. R. Martin himself can't do, which is to tie it all up and and continue to make it interesting. When like as we say, you've gotten rid of all the human players and manipulation. Yeah. Um. Now, if if this final season is really just them all fighting against White Walkers. And apparently all the episodes are going to be this long of the final season. I just can't see myself staying engaged with it. I don't know about you. Oh, I mean, I'm in. I'm in till the end. Oh, I'll watch that. it. Yeah. But I can't see myself dying to watch it every week. Yeah, I just wish that they wish there'd been more surprises. And the one surprise they did give us, as I said, was embarrassing. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. But it was like, it was still, uh, still a good watch. It was good. And look. Again, I'm like basically probably in like the early stages of labour, so I'm not the right person to be judging something and I was really tired. But it certainly it certainly wasn't for me, it was one of the weaker episodes of the whole season. Yeah. Um and just anticlimactic. Yeah, anticlimactic. Okay, so yeah. um let's wrap it up and go inside because thanks roasting. everyone for listening to these because yes. obviously we're a cinema podcast and it's we've had a lot of fun doing this review and we've got really good response so we're really happy. And thanks for all the feedback. We've had the most feedback. <laughs> yeah. Um we've never had this much feedback about, about any our podcast. We've done. Yeah. And people are so nice as well. Um just writing really complimentary things and that's nice including people who've told us they use it to exercise with which I like. If you've uh, oh yes uh, yeah. Rachel from last week who we mentioned uh, was said she was uh, running up a hill when she heard her shout out <laughs> yeah. and so I said we maybe we should give her some motivation yeah. <laughs> uh, come on Rachel if you're running up a hill you could do it yeah um, right so hopefully it's a bank holiday Monday and you're not doing that 
if you if you enjoyed listening uh, please uh, please 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 give us a, a review on iTunes just head in there and just give us a quick star rating and a, and a couple of words if you can um, it really helps us out and we would massively appreciate it and uh, we're also on all the social medias uh, just search the cinema at the cinema yes on Instagram Twitter and Facebook yeah and then I wanted to say right I thought me and Dave should have done a special episode last night but he wasn't up for it on um, the Cormoran Strike adaptation on BBC One so for anyone who doesn't know these are the JK Rowling crime books that she wrote as the pseudonym Robert Galbraith um, I've read all the books I really like them and Dave's read one of them so BBC One adapted yeah, they're it good. and the first part aired last night which I saw I perceived as a cinematic event Dave didn't so we didn't review it but I think people should go and watch that it was good yeah it was good yeah fun fun uh, PI sort of thing yeah really fun and yeah. um, what was really interesting about it is the actors in it whilst, whilst being accomplished are by no means big actors for such a big show and then we were chatting about it and we were saying well it's because if you've got JK Rowling as the name you don't need to spend loads of money getting famous actors as well what you can do is actually cast actors that are perfect for the roles yeah I don't, I don't, uh, forget the guy's name oh, um, he's incredible he's really good he's, he's like Cormoran Strike has leapt out of the book and is real like that's the only way I can describe he's really good and there's a lot to be said for casting unknown actors uh, and he's not and we, like he's an accomplished actor he's been in lots yes, of stuff but, but he's, he's not, not famous he's not a name and he's yeah. not a face and then he's better able to to sort of jump into this role he was and actually, unbelievable he's le- exactly as I imagined him but tying it back into Game of Thrones I think that's partly was uh, is a big strength of the show because the only really known actor when this started was Sean Bean yeah. he was a draw at the beginning um, but even he fits right into this and he wasn't even you know he's not exactly universe. the huge actor he was big but he wasn't like yeah. A-list Hollywood so I really enjoyed that and then the other thing I wanted to mention just because we're doing a TV podcast and we're finishing this up now um, we're behind the times on this one because we lived in Australia when it launched, so we kind of missed the UK hype about it. But we've been catching up on Line of Duty. It's on Netflix. Oh, yeah, we're up to season three now. Uh, check that out on Netflix. The first two seasons are there, and we just got the third season on Amazon. Yeah, we're really dedicated. We watched two on Netflix, and now we've it bought one on Amazon. Fun. It is so good. Really good police thriller. Yeah. Uh, BBC police thriller. Very, very good. Set, so set in these are all great maternity well. leave watches at the moment. Um, so, yeah, anyway, yeah, just other up. TV recommendations. And thank oh, you for and, listening. Uh, so you probably you probably won't hear from us uh, until we've had our baby. <laughs> well, hopefully we have it soon. We, yeah, the, the wait is, <laughs> is getting longer. Um, we, we're we going to put up a couple of episodes in the meantime that we've recorded and banked. We went to uh, the outdoor cinema in Adelstone uh, to watch Grease and Top Gun yeah we saw Grease ages ago but we said we'd keep it because we don't need to tie it in with the cinema obviously um, I can't even so I think we saw Grease like nearly two months ago so we've had that episode on the, the back burner and then we saw Top Gun a few weeks ago um, so yeah, yeah so, so watch, keep an eye out for them and uh, let's wrap it up let's yeah. go okay bye okay, thanks for listening bye